Well, hello, it's Pastor Delphine here, ready for another time of the fragrance of prayer, that sweet time that we get to spend together where we look to the Lord in prayer. Over the last few weeks, we have been doing a study based on John Bevere's book, The Bait of Satan. And we have been talking a little bit about what that bait is, that bait of Satan offense, and how we can get set free from it. And we've been going through declarations that we can pray over ourselves so that our hearts might be covered and protected from this spirit of offense that so easily invades. There's so many things going on in the world today, so many things that we can allow ourselves to become offended by, so many opportunities when we go through our daily lives from work situations to just going in the grocery store and having someone maybe be slightly rude to us based on something. But we are a people who serve the Lord God Almighty. We believe in Jesus Christ and we believe in the power of love and the power to keep our hearts open. And so we're spending this time doing these declarations so that we can put a shield, a guard up over our hearts to make sure that we refuse to be offended. You know, when my kids were young, I um, gave each one of them a scripture. And my son, his scripture was, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And every day before our son, John, would leave home, I would say, hey, John, what's your scripture? And he would say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I would remind him, John, it's a choice. You can choose to rejoice and be glad in it or you can allow yourself to become offended, upset about things. But remember, you have the power. God lives on the inside of you and he will help you. And I say that to you today, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you have gone through, no matter what you may go through in the future, it's your choice. You can choose the attitude that you have. You can choose to protect your heart and not, not allow offense in. As I was reading the bait of Satan um, over the last few days, I came across this story and I actually want to read it to you as context for our declarations today. It's from uh, John Revere's book and it's under the title Self Preservation. It starts on page 68. And if you'll just permit me, it says that there's an old parable that fits a situation. Back in the days when the settlers were moving to the West, a wise man stood on a hill outside a new western town. As the settlers came from the east, the wise man was the first person they met before coming to the settlement. They asked eagerly what the people of the town were like. He answered them with a question. What were the people like in the town you just left? Some said the town we came from was wicked. The people were rude gossips who took advantage of innocent people. It was filled with thieves and liars. The wise man answered, this town is the same as the one you left. They thanked the man for saving them from the trouble they had just come out of. Then they moved on further west. Then another group of settlers arrived and asked the same question. What is this town like? The wise man asked again, what was the town like where you came from? These responded, it was wonderful. We had dear friends. Everyone looked out for the other's interest. There was never any lack because all cared for one another. If someone had a big project, the entire community gathered to help. It was a hard decision to leave, but we felt compelled to make way for future generations by going west as pioneers. The wise old man said to them exactly what he had said to the other group. This town is the same as the one you left. These people responded with joy. Let's settle here. How they viewed their past relations was their scope for their future ones. I shared with you the story about my son because we have an opportunity when our children are young to set them up for success in their future by helping them to learn how to focus on the positive 
instead of the negative, to make choices based on their power and not the power of other people, to choose to trust God and have faith in the goodness of God over every situation rather than believe that all things are bad and it won't come out well. Likewise, you and I are called to evaluate our hearts, to look at the thoughts that we have, to consider the ways that we have chosen in the past, and to look at whether we are impacting the situation. You know, often we leave a place and we blame other people, but when you go out in peace, when you know that God has released you from a place, you can sleep at night and you don't feel the need to talk down about the place and say negative things. So as we do the declarations today, I want you to see yourself physically and mentally in your mind, physically putting on a shield over your heart that, you know, the Bible says that the darts come at us, but the shield of faith deflects those darts. I want you to deflect the things that are coming towards you that are negative, that are not from God and be open to receiving the things that are coming towards you that are from God. So let's go to him and let's do our declarations today. If you would just prayerfully follow along, listen to it, take it into your heart and come in agreement with these declarations. Father, make us not only your sons and daughters adopted into your family by new birth through Christ, but also your son able to be identified as your son or daughter because we display the godly characteristic of our father. As mature children of God, we are being led by the Spirit of God, and we will only act on the leadings of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we commit to obeying the Word of God that is spoken to us from you, that we may grow and mature in our times of conflict and suffering. We will not allow your truth to have its, we will allow your truth to have its way in our life so that we are not like those who are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The devil would not be able to snare us in the trap of offense through a false sense of self-protection by harboring an offense. We willingly allow our Heavenly Father to develop Christ-like character in us through our obedience to his instructions. We will not harbor resentment in our hearts against others, which causes us to leave a church or relationship because we recognize that the same attitude will be foremost in our hearts in a new settling. We will follow the advice of John 20, 23 and forgive the offense of others. When the plan of God for our lives causes us to face hurts, and wrongful attitudes, we will not run from these things, but will find healing and restoration from dealing with our hurts through the power of the Holy Spirit. Love forgets wrongs and gives hope for our future. We commit our lives to loving others and finding opportunities for restoration, healing, and peace. Father, we willingly choose the path of humility and self-denial that leads to healing and spiritual maturity. We have made decisions to make others' well-being more important than our own, even for those who have brought us great sorrow. We will remember the example of Elijah, the great prophet of God who allowed discouragement and threats to take him out of the plan of God. When we are discouraged and flee from God's direct will, we will allow him to lead us back into the center of his will. We will not become a Balaam who seeks personal rewards rather than obedience to the will of God. We will not seek temporary relief from our hurts, but we will allow God to lead us in the path that is best for our lives. Father, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit that we may fulfill the assignments you have given us. We will be your unmovable, obedient servants. Our lives will be filled with the love of God, which causes us to forget all wrongs and fill with hope for the future. We refuse to walk in the path of pride, but desire only peace, even at the risk of rejection. The road that leads to life 
leads through humiliation and abasement, but it ultimately leads us to the everlasting peace with God. As we continue in these declarations, I want you to remember that what will be shaken and can be shaken will not stand, but what cannot be shaken but will remain. Are you so strong in the word? Are you so set on living your life that when the winds and the problems of life come against you, you will not be shaken? My brother, my sister, refuse to be shaken. Let's make these declarations. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare that I will never be capable of betraying my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will not be shaken. Holy Spirit, examine our hearts and purge us of any selfishness and pride that could hinder our devotion to Christ. We are declaring that in everything that we say or do, we will strive always to, dis to display the character and humility of Christ. Father, transform our hearts completely and remove all shreds of the pride of life that we may be able to fulfill our destiny in Christ. Holy Spirit, we are ready for you to complete your shaking of our lives so that all remains is God's sure foundation. I will not be shaken. Lord, we hunger to know you in your fullness of life. Reveal yourself to us. Father, our lives are founded on your unconditional love and we trust you completely and would lay down our lives for you. We declare anything that happens to us that, threaten, that threatens to destroy us is the work of the enemy and will not harm us because you, Father God, will cause all things to work together for our good. We declare that the enemy will not be able to distort the character of our God, deceiving us and leaving us with lies about God's character. My God, our God, will never do anything to harm or destroy us. Therefore, we freely give ourselves totally to you, God. We are committed to your care. Expose our hearts, God, through the trials in our lives that we may be found with roots established deep in God, firmly established in you. We declare that like Peter, we are stones built on a solid foundation of the rock, Christ Jesus. We shall not be moved. Examine us, Holy Spirit, and reveal the hidden weaknesses in our hearts. By the grace of God, remove our weaknesses and build our lives in your power and might. Father, there is nothing of eternal value in our own abilities, but in your grace and power, we can fulfill the calling you have placed on our lives. Father, we declare openly that we will never serve you for what you can do for us, but rather for who you are and what you have already done for us. And Father, we take a moment to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for keeping us and making us into the people that you have called us to be. Lord, we thank you for our church, Spring Valley, or whatever church we may be attending. We thank you for Pastor Kyle and all of the staff pastors and all of our leaders and all of our members. We thank you for every offering that has ever been raised. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to build up the kingdom of God, to do missions work around the world, to take care of our people, both locally and abroad. God, you're faithful. Thank you for our homes, God. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. Thank you for our future children, children that we may not have yet. Thank you for our spouses, God, for sp future spouses, for those who will enter into our paths that will bring good into our lives. God, we thank you that you are a faithful God, that you are a holy God, that you are a mighty God, that you are a God who have promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us, that in the midnight hour, when things don't seem to be going well, when hurts and pain 
names may be coming up in our hearts and minds. We thank you that you are with us, that you, God, stand by our side, that you cry tears over us, that you bottle the tears that we shed. And God, we thank you that you remember that no matter how long we may be in a situation or circumstance, you already know how it's going to end and when it's going to end. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to learn about the offenses that are in our lives, to pray and make declarations over our lives, and to trust your Holy Spirit to work in those situations that we may be all that we were destined to be when you formed us in our mother's womb. We thank you, God, and we bless you as we continue with our declarations. Jesus, our love for you is not merely based on your principles and word but it is deeply established on who you are to us individually. Father God, we want you to rule and reign in our lives. We will not allow an attitude of spiritual legalism to rise above our desires for an intimate relationship with you. And oh God, that is our heart's cry. We want to be intimate with you. God, we want to know you. We want to love you. We want to live for you. We want to be passionate and on fire for you. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, we declare that we will never wield the sword of division between our brothers and sisters in you, but we will live in peace with all who have called upon your name and are part of your kingdom. Father, prevent us from being offended by the truth of your word, however, and when it is presented to us. Reveal our true motives so that we will never be tempted to uproot ourselves from those who preach your truth. We declare that we will never compromise the truth of God because we fear that truth will offend others. We are determined to feed and nurture the ones to whom God has sent us with his truth and knowledge. Holy Spirit, Pour the fresh oil of your anointing over our lives that we may continue to fulfill your will in our lives. Your love and judgments are perfect. Father, even if our own friends and relatives are offended by the truth of your word and those of Jesus' own household were offended, we will not stop seeking your truth in love. Holy Spirit, enable us to live our lives before our loved ones in such a way that they will see our love for you and be drawn to you. And Father, we do pray, even as I spoke about my son, John, and how I taught my children the scriptures when they were young. Father, we pray for every person under the sound of my voice that they would build a legacy of living by your word, of teaching their children and their children's children your word of making sure that the generations know you, have a chance to accept you, and refuse to live lives without you. God, we pray for every son, daughter, spouse, cousin, brother, sister, friend, neighbor, who does not know you as Lord and Savior. We ask, God, that you would show us how to speak your word, how to help people to receive you through the power of the Holy Spirit, God, we want to see people brought into the kingdom, especially those, God, who are in our homes. Help us to have an anointing to be able to pray and speak life over them and see them accept you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Lord, we know that as we live to fulfill the will of God, we will not fulfill the desires of men and that we may suffer in the flesh, but nothing will move us from the truth of God. Father, we will fight to stay free from offense because we know that your ways are always higher than our ways. We are determined in our hearts that we will obey the spirit of God no matter what the cost. If the truth of the gospel offends others, we will not apologize for that truth. With Paul, I declare, I know that the cross of Christ is the only way to salvation and that fact will offend people. But that is the truth and there's no way I'm going to preach anything else. Remember, our lives are living testimonies of the God we serve. 
How does that testimony look? Do people see the love of Christ in us? Do they see the grace and mercy of our God? Do they see the power, the resurrecting power of the Holy Spirit being manifest in areas of our lives? Do they see us as overcomers, victorious, or do they see us as whiners and losers, people who do not understand what it means to trust God in the darkest situations? Do they see us as compassionate people who want to heal and to save and to deliver, not kill, steal, and destroy? How are we representing Jesus in our everyday lives? Do we cry out to God in prayer? Do we intercede on behalf of others? Does it hurt our hearts when bad things happen? Do we weep for the lost? Do we weep for those who do not have for those hungry in the street, for those who do not have homes? Do we take our money and give to the poor? Do we take and feed the poor? Do we speak up for those who do not have a voice? When we get rid of the baits, the offenses, the things that the enemy tries to bring in our lives, we have more freedom to hear God speaking to us, encouraging us to do more, to be more, to say more, to stand for justice, to act with mercy, to live just lives. As we do these last declarations for today, I want you to just take a moment and just breathe in deeply. And I want you to exhale, just let it out. God, I let go of anything in my life that stops me from being able to hear you, that stops me from being able to see you. God, I want to be all that you have called me to be. I want to be free of offense. I want to walk in love. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to say what you want me to say. I want to do what you want me to do. Lord, we will not allow a judgmental attitude on our parts to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother or sister's way. We will continually use the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to cause us to humble ourselves as little children in our Father's kingdom. Father, make us like your son, Jesus, who chose to use his liberty and freedom in you to serve others. There is freedom in serving, but bondage in slavery. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we choose the attitude of a servant, not that of a slave. Father, we declare that we will live in the benefits of that liberty in you, which is our righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, through your power, we declare that we will never use our freedom in Christ as a license to demand our rights and cause others to be offended and stumble. We choose to build up others and not to destroy. We choose to lay down our lives to serve others. We choose to obey our Father instead of pleasing ourselves. Before we act in our Christian liberty, we will remember to ask ourselves, am I seeking my own edification or the edification of others? We declare that in every area of our lives, we will allow the Holy Spirit to challenge us to live as a servant to all. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful to me or edifying to another. We will not seek our own well-being, but the well-being of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will not seek our own profit, but the profit of others that they may be saved. Father, we open our lives to your examination. Deal with the attitudes of our heart that need to change. Forgive us for our own self-seeking and mold us into the character of your son, Jesus. Father, if some fault in us causes us to sin, cut it out of our lives completely. It is better to be without a part of us than to be cast into the everlasting fire. We declare that we will not cause one of our father's little ones to sin it would be better that we drowned in the depth of the sea than to cause a weaker brother or sister to be offended in sin. 
Father, we will live our lives in the knowledge of our spiritual freedom, but we will only act through the unconditional love of God in each one of us. And everyone said, amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Fragrance of Prayer. And as I say always each week, from the Allen household to your household, sending you hugs and love. Just know you are loved, you are blessed, you are a child of the King. And no matter what someone says, when you have on your full armor, you will not be caught in the bait of Satan trap of offense. Kisses and love. Be blessed.